Welcome to Unit 7. So last week you learned about, Boole about the Boolean data type. Now you learned that Boolean data can either be true or false. You also learned about Boolean functions and and or. The Boolean functions and and or take multiple expressions and produce a Boolean output. You also met Sam the butterfly and learned how to write functions to help keep him on the screen. But we saw that the original on-screen huh function only worked in one direction at a time. You use the AND function to make on-screen look at both directions. Today, we will learn how to use Boolean data to control your functions by giving them conditional execution. So open your workbook to page 25. So here's 25. Should be a word problem called cost about Luigi's Pizza. So Luigi owns a pizza joint. Customers can order pizzas with different toppings. Each pizza topping has its own cost. However, the cashiers have a hard time remembering the cost of each. Luigi has hired you to help write a program for his cash register. He would like a program that tells the cashiers the cost of the pizza based on the topping. So here's your um, page 25. Directions. Luigi's Pizza has hired you as a programmer. They offer pepperoni, which costs $10.50, cheese, which costs $9, chicken, which costs $11.25, and broccoli pizza, um, which costs $10.25. Write a function called cost, which takes the name of the topping and outputs the cost of a pizza with that topping. So on your paper, you can write along as I go through these. So we're going to do the contract and purpose statement, just like we always do. And so every contract has three parts. The function name, which we put in right at the beginning before the colon, right? The domain, so the domain is going to be a string, and the range is going to be a number, right? Because um, write a function called cost, which takes in the name of a topping, and a name is going to be a string, and it outputs the cost of a pizza with that topping. And then our purpose statement will say, given a pizza topping, return the cost of the pizza. Okay? And they were really explicit here, which they gave the examples of all the different toppings and all the different um, costs. So here we're going to build up some examples. So this is going to be a new kind of function. We're going to learn something new. So the pizza toppings are pepperoni, and here we have it in quotes. We know it's a string. Pepperoni, cheese, chicken, broccoli. So those are the four that we know about so far. Cost, 1050, 9, 1125, 1025. So we got those just from the problem statement, right? And so you can write those in on your um, paper so that you keep up with me and you can pause whenever you need to. So remember that, um, I'm going to go back. Pizza toppings, right? That's that's what we got here. And in, in, in programming terms, we'll call that the domain, or in, in algebra terms, the domain. That's what goes into the function. And what do you think we're going to put here? What comes out of a function? The range. All right. Now let's think about the types of functions we've seen so far, and what's different about this function compared to the others. So if we think of a function called green triangle, it always made green triangles. If we, when we did safe left, we always compared the input coordinate, which we called x, right, the x-coordinate, to negative 50, no matter what the input was. Every time the input was a number, we compared that number to minus 50. Update danger, you coded that one. Remember, we always are subtracted the same amount. And so that's the, so all the functions we've done so far have had that, where we get in something and we do one thing based on what came in. And that was evident from um, when we were going from examples to function definition. Remember, we circled what changed, um, and that essentially gives us the definition. The number of variables would always match the number of things in the domain, right? So when we had um, the x 
coordinate change, we had a variable called x. If the, tri if the uh, shape size was changing, we would change the, uh, we would have a size variable. But in this one, so let's, let's do some examples for this one. You can put these in your book too. So we're going to have cost. We're going to have an example of cost. If we input pepperoni, we want to output 1050, right? So we're getting these exactly from the word problem. Now if we put in cheese, we want to output 9. If we put in chicken, we want to output 1125. If we put in broccoli, we want to output 1025. So the topping determines what the price is. It's a different price for all the different topics, which makes sense in, in real life, um, and it also makes sense in our program. So in this case, we have two changeable variables in the cost function, but the domain only has one thing, right? So the domain, let's go, I'm going to go backwards. The domain is just the string that is the represents the uh, topping. Um, but the, another variable, something else that changes is the price. So the domain of only has one thing, which is the, the, the string that represents the um, topping. But the value for price depends entirely on the value for topping. So we can say the topping is an independent variable. And the price is a dependent variable because it depends on the topping. The cost function uses a special language feature called conditionals. And you know, think about the, what the word condition means in English. If I give you a condition, that means one thing's going to happen uh, if the condition is met, and another thing might happen if the condition is not met. And so in um, our racket programming language, we're going to use this word cond, C-O-N-D to handle conditionals. All right, and we're going to use this middle column to kind of say what, what, what that's going to look like. So here's the conditional. And this is a, a racket expression, right? And so we know that this first thing is an operator. String equals huh is going to compare the two things beside it. So it's going to compare topping, which is going to be a variable that's going to come in, and the string pepperoni. And uh, just remember these things with uh, these predicate, they're called predicate functions, with question marks after, which we say, huh, what's going to be returned from that? It's always going to be a Boolean. So a Boolean is going to come out of this function. So this is represents either true or false. So anytime we see uh, an expression like this, where it's got a question mark predicate at the first, for the first word, for the operation, it's always going to return a Boolean. So this is either true or false. So if the topping it does equal pepperoni, then this is true. If the topping does not equal pepperoni, then it's false. And here's cheese, chicken, and broccoli. So here's how we compare the conditional for every member that we know of so far in the domain. And then we'll look at how to turn that um, this chart into the racket code. All right, so we're going to define, and you can follow along in your workbook. Define, cost is the function name, right? Topping is the variables. That's what we decided. Here's this thing that changes. We'll call that topping. And then, this everything on the right-hand side of this bar, this is what's going to come out of the function. 10, 15, 9, 11, 25, and 1025. Now, only one of those can come out at a time, and we'll use this part over here to control which one it is. So if the string topping equals pepperoni, then it's 950. So you can think of this part as if, and this part is then, of the conditional. If the string topping is cheese, then it's 9. If it's chicken, then it's 1125. If it's broccoli, then it's 1025. So that's how the cond is going to work, and the word cond is used to control that. So we have the word cond, a big, long expression. Here's the opening paren, and then here's the ending of cond. And cond is made up of one or multiple, as many as we need, actually. So that's a little open bracket. That's a square bracket. So it is um, right beside the letter P with no shift. Is that one right there? 
and that it every conditional part, each one of these bracket lines, has two parts. It has the Boolean part, which is either true or false, and then the output if it's true. So if the left part is true, then the right part um, gets returned. And if more than one happen to be true, it's the it'll be the first one from the top. The, the first true one that gets hit, that's the one that it returns. So when I put in a string, if it's pepperoni, then I get 1050 out. If it's cheese, I get 9 out. If it's chicken, I get 1125 out. If it's broccoli, then I get 1025 out. So take your design recipe from that previous page. So hopefully you have that all written down. If you don't, go back and write all that down. Um, and then let's make a Unit 7 program. Um, so I'm going to switch over to Dr. Racket. If you already have something in your racket, then you can go under File and choose New, and you'll get a new blank window here. So then let's go under File. Let's choose Save Definitions As. And then just save it into um, where your uh, documents are. Um, let me navigate to it first. Nope. You have yours in uh, courses. Now it should look like yours. PS1 resources, source files. Just put it in there with all your other stuff. And let's call it um, unit 7. And then it'll put, uh, I think I'll say dot .rkt. unit 7.rkt. And then that changed the name up here. All right. If we can see that, that changed the name. All right. So now go back to your workbook and copy that design over and then uh, make sure it executes um, including let's see we had examples right yep we got examples so put in your examples put in this definition right here put all that into your um, unit 7 program save it and check it if you have any trouble come get me run it and test it and then go ahead and add a couple of additional toppings and write tests for those. So whatever toppings you like, go ahead and add those to the program and give them a fake uh, uh, amount. You can make it um, so it's cheaper. You can make it so that yours is super expensive, however you want to do. We already have these test cases. But what happens if you enter something that's not on the list? So give it a try and put in vegetables or bacon or something else that's not on the list. What do you get? So the last clause in a conditional, um, we want to control what we get. So there's an else clause that actually we can put in as the last. So um, right down here, where you know, so we, we had our, our conditional brackets, our con brackets. We can have the last one be else, and then put whatever we want to return. So it's a bracket just like the other since the last one, and you can put else. And you could put one cent if you want to charge one cent. These guys want to charge a million dollars. So if you order something that's not on the list, it's going to the, the, the system here is going to come back a million dollars. So it's important to test your code, and also think beyond what's expected because um, in a real system, some anybody can type in whatever they want. So try the cost function with cheese or with cheese spelled like this. Or broccoli and broccoli spelled like this. Um, what happens? And what do you? How do you think you could fix that? Um, if you want to, you can look up some functions, try to figure out, think about how you'd want to fix it. And I'll ask you that later. Um, how you think we could fix th our function to handle different spellings like that? All right. Looks like here's the the whole thing. Um, so just make sure that yours tests well and that you've added a couple of extra and you still you have your else clause in there. And I think that, oh, please do. Oh, okay. And then one more thing to do today. 
Um, Luigi thinks you did such a good job on the function cost. He wants you to write two more functions. Cost drink and cost dessert. So um, in the end of your book where you have, um, you know, we're not going to do these extra ones. We'll just do cost drink, cost dessert. So at the end of your workbook where you have extra lines for extra design recipes, do a design recipe for cost drink and a design recipe for cost dessert and make up your own um, domain for those um, with at least three examples. So you want at least three different drinks, three different desserts. You can make up the prices for those, um, but make your own version for cost drink and cost dessert. And go ahead and put those in the design recipe and also in your unit seven uh, racket file and test them. All right, so today you learned about independent and dependent variables. You learned about conditional functions. You learned how you could use the cond keyword to program conditional functions. Next time, you're going to learn about the algebra notation for conditional functions, and you'll learn how to use conditional functions to move your game player. See you next time.